Someone else? Um, oh, sorry, I was, well, I was making gestures at me out there in the audience, and so I'm not sure trying to interpret what I mean, I think the thing is, so the, the kinds of, I didn't have a, a, a specific activity or a thing, uh, like John said, that inspired me, but so much as being able to do problem solving, right? And, and the, the thing that we do here, and NASA does, and JPL does, is we solve problems. And we solve problems that involve, uh, you know, obviously very state-of-the-art activities, but also things that require large teams of people working together in a really intimate way that is really different, I think, than almost any other human endeavor. It's amazing to solve a problem as complicated as landing on the surface of Mars where you're utterly dependent on you know, a team of 100 or 200 or 1,000 other people to do their part and that to do it to solve their problems. The Aerotech Museum Review up in Lancaster. Uh, what am I really seeing in that photo that is behind you? Uh, and I heard some, uh, something about a second photo, a uh, shadow of the curiosity being and wheels, uh, or a wheel of the curiosity. So could you lead me through that photo? Uh, maybe John or Adam or somebody. Thank you. Um, well, I can just tell you, I mean, yes, what you're seeing in the first picture that you said, that was the shadow of, of curiosity um, there in the, in the view. These are the rear has cam views, so we're looking out the back of the rover. Uh, I don't think we got any of the front has cams. Oh, is it front? Okay. Thank you. It's front. There we go. The other one is, is the rear, and that is the wheel you see in the lower corner there. We do expect to get more pictures back in this uh, upcoming Odyssey Pass, which hopefully will be in about 25 minutes here. So we'll get yet more pictures. Uh, and these images were actually through the cover. And actually, if you go back to the other one uh, for a second, can you switch to the other picture? You can see those little speckles around the, the, the black little dots or speckles around the outside, um, which is probably dust kicked up, you know, during the landing event that's stuck onto the covers. And so it's good that we have covers <laughs> because now we'll take those covers off and those, those uh, hopefully those, uh, those specks of dust will, will not be visible in the next set of pictures we get. Okay. Bert Hardwood of The New Yorker. Um, I may be imagining this, but the one time during the landing the, the temperature seemed to drop in the room was when Adam asked for OD-278 and they said, no, we only have 277. What was happening? Or was it anything of significance? Double cheeseburger? Triple cheese. Double? Double cheese, eh? Can I have fries with that? No fries, no fries. Chips, no coke, Pepsi, cheeseburger, cheeseburger, double the best. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> we are... Uh, as we're coming in, the navigators are continuing to make OD's orbital determination, where the spacecraft is, and updating. And they all have numbers, an estimate, an estimate, an estimate. And, and they get better as, as Mars grabs us and the, and the pull of Mars um, uh, reduce some of the in inherent uncertainty in that estimate. While that's going on, while EDL is happening, in the EDL war room in a different building, we were seeing on some of the cameras, um, the flight dynamics team is running simulations to the ground with our simulation tool um, based on those updated ODs. And so I had seen that OD 228 come up and I was asking if they had that because I had had it and they hadn't they didn't have it over there yet and they hadn't started them. that was what that was about uh, let me get a new question for you uh, Ian Thompson from the Red at the forefront of the scientific frontier so I really want to personally congratulate on behalf of myself but also on behalf of my boss, President Obama, the team here at JPL, at NASA, and around the country that contributed <coughs> to spectacular achievement, data, and new understandings are going to be uncovered in the coming days, months, and years because of this success. 
landing the Mars Science Laboratory rover, Curiosity, on the surface of the Red Planet was by any measure the most challenging mission ever attempted in the history of robotic planetary exploration. About the status of U.S. leadership in space, well, there's a one-ton automobile-sized piece of American ingenuity. There is not. There is not. You don't believe it. And it's sitting on the surface of Mars right now. No, it's not. And it should certainly put any such doubts to rest. No evidence of it is serious, and in fact, you you need to prove your case that you you believe that there's some foreign object in another world that man put there tonight. Otherwise, you're just a stinking liar. The administration is committed to a vibrant and coordinated strategy of Mars exploration and planetary exploration more generally here on Earth and throughout the solar system. So, congratulations again, and long live American curiosity. Thank you. Can we not do this? Let's not do this. And while that reaches out and explores and conquers and engineers, we are tourists, pioneers. And have that's reflected in the activities and actions and results of tonight. So I want to say thank you to the blue shirts. Groups of folks who have like to thank, and I think we all are thankful for us. This the drama of us all being able to experience it together comes the efforts of the Odyssey. Project and the Odyssey spacecraft and that team being able to get that bent pipe UHF telemetry to us. to be for playing in the other uh, room and that's actually a better show. I hope. At any rate, um, very nominal, uh, remarkably good. Uh, um, our navigation error was, uh, was on the low side of our expectation, which meant that we probably had a good alignment between the celestial center sensors and the inertial uh, Sensors, Man, do you think that he should have expected at least that first question? You claim that you go to Mars and you're not even ready for the question, hey, what was it like to land on Mars? We landed with um, 140 kilograms of fuel reserves. Which means nothing. And we're going to bend work quite diligently stretching the tanks at my insistence because I was worried we wouldn't have enough fuel and so can, I think can I we go over how you did that exactly? There. <laughs> exactly. So, Send us the uh, data. It looked good. Good and clean. And and it looks at least by my eyeball that we 
I landed in a nice flat spot. Beautiful. <laughs> really beautiful. That was terrible. That was a terrible answer. What you look more attractive than mine. <laughs> I won't tell him that, Adam. Okay. I think he heard it. What, Wait, what? I, I have to ask you, what kind of file type, can you tell us about the image file type and compression that was used to send this very important couple of thumbnails back from Mars? Yes, unfortunately I absolutely cannot. <laughs> if Justin Mackey is in the room, or there's a couple other people on the team who deal with, with that I'll quickly, but I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Sorry. Okay, uh, we're going to the hospital here. We'll make sweet for my friend. Right there. Thank you. Hi, Sally Rail with Planetary Society, and um, this is for Adam. Uh, two very quick questions. Well, first one's quick. Are you going to call your daughter Curiosity? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> uh, the Unmanned Space Flight uh, website has uh, uh, coordinates for the landing that go down to something like five decimal points. Um, I just wanted to confirm with you that, that those, those uh, you do have them, have those sort of coordinates. And am I reading those coordinates correctly when I see that it looks as though you landed within 500 meters of the uh, skirt around the mountain, but I mean you're really very close to the mountain at the closer end in the landing ellipse and possibly within striking distance of the phyllosilicate trench. I, can, I can't confirm that. <laughs> um, my estimate, I'm looking for somebody, yes, there's somebody in the audience here who has that in the tip of their noggin. Um, we should have soon that estimate, uh, but I don't have it to five decimal places. Uh, we wouldn't report it to that because we don't, we're certain that we don't know it to that. Um, and I don't know what the space, unmannedspaceflight.com uh, estimate is. And there's a team of people that are working. The world of STEM hasn't figured out a way to remind people that that iPhone and that iPad and that, you know, all the code that makes Twitter and Facebook work, it all takes, it all comes from, you know, people that have an education around STEM. So you get involved in stuff like FIRST Robotics. I, uh, we have footage of you being a part of that whole experience and, and getting art sat on top of it. So now that we have all these new tools, we have to create a new marriage between art, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and that is called STEAM, S-T-A-M. So that's what I want to put that A in that STEAM to create some STEAM. All right, well, while you're here, I understand you wanted to do a shout out. Shout out. A shout out to some of the kids out there. Oh, shout out. A shout out to some of the kids out there. Oh, shout out. A shout out to some of the kids out there. Oh, shout out. A shout out to some of the kids out there. Oh, yes, I want to shout out to all the kids that uh, joined up in Boyle Heights for my um, I Am College tra track program. Um, so we're here in the Surface MSA, and the Surface MSA is the control room for, for surface operations, um, just like we had the control room where we're just watching for, for cruise operations. And basically after launch, while the cruise team was flying the, the, the mission to Mars, uh, the surface team was getting ready for surface operations practicing, learning how to operate the rover on the surface, writing new software for the, for, the, for the surface operation, and doing all of that testing and training here in this room. And we wanted to have a separate facility so we didn't get in the way of crews and crews didn't get in the way of, uh, of surface. So this team will take care of figuring out all the commands and sending those commands up to Curiosity from here on out. That's right. Everything we run from, from this room where we're going to be here for, um, for about three months. And then if we get good enough at it, we're going to send a lot of our scientists back to their home institutions and, uh, and they can do a lot of it by remote telecon and by, um, uh, and by, by web services, things like that. But for the next few months, we're all going to be here, all hundreds of people uh, operating the rover every day. So tell us what we're here for tonight, the, the downlink. Um, we, okay. we did have a downlink during the, the actual landing and this is another one. Um, this one happened, what, uh, just about now? It's, it's about now. And so they're recording all the EDR events and then transmitting that back to the Earth. 
Right, but that's like when we were able to hear the great uh, commentary that, uh, that uh, Al Chen was saying. He was reading the telemetry that Odyssey was, was sending. Now, Odyssey flies over Mars, or points on Mars, about every two hours. So now it's about two hours later after EDL, and Odyssey's going to fly over Curiosity again. Now, so Mars uh, rotates it's not the best in that, in that for hours. communications, so but it should be good enough to, to, to give us another update on the rover health, make sure that the rover is still happy and safe on the surface, and that a couple of key events that, that we think are important uh, have happened. Uh, fire some pyro devices uh, to release uh, the arm mechanisms and other, other uh, parts of the rover that we need on surface. Also deploy the HASCAM covers, which allows us to take a little bit better images, very similar um, images video, to the video, um, an animation that shows the uh, removal of the dust covers, and that's what's happening right about now. That's right. We have Do we this. have the... Okay, it may be coming or it may not. Oh. But basically, we have two clear covers on the HASCAM, so it may not be obvious to folks at home that the pictures that we've seen so far are actually taken through those, those covers. The, the, but if you look carefully, we have a little bit of view from those covers. So we get rid of those covers, and we can take, take those images again, front and rear. And we also uh, have downsampled those. We've compressed those images a little bit so that they're not, we haven't seen the full quality of those photos yet. And we're going to send back a little bit higher quality photo on this pass. So get rid of the cover and send a better quality image uh, down to the earth. All right. I hear Jessica Samuels speaking right now, flight director, and we're going to take a break and listen in. It is a low elevation pass, and uh, and it is not necessarily expected to be a lot of state of the I went ahead and used my special powers uh, to go back into time and I'm here on board Apollo 11 with Buzz and Neil and the third guy that nobody remembers. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. Go ahead and take it easy over there. No, no, seriously. Phil Collins, everyone. Phil Collins. Seconds and counting. How you doing? Hey, Neil, Buzz. Seconds, you, I always forget what your name is. Twelve. <laughs> Ignition sequence start. The buckle says Six, up, but then I'm not. Five, it says down four, too. Okay. Three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Thirty-two minutes past the hour. Lift -off Probably doesn't matter. 11. Never mind. Hey, this is a pop up mission control. Go ahead and roll to the side over to Roger and Randy. Roger, you seem to be tilted to the yard, right? Hey, Dave, did you go ahead and send up that pound? Hey, Pompo, I can't talk about that right now. I'll talk about it later once I get up. Roger. Hey, what's the switch to, guys? Roger. Me. <laughs> Hey Neil, go ahead and bust go ahead move on that thruster after the thruster over. Roger. Over, Roger. Roger. Flight pilot trajectory confirmed staging. Roger. Flight booster landing board out was way early. Okay. Flight confirmed. Roger. Roger. We have a million quadrant of the lower left. Roger that. Landing now. Confirmed and board out. Mass hey, thruster first, fire, and sound being heard, Roger. Flight booster then board out with way early, okay. Flight can drop the fire and down. This moon landing sucks. We have the moon landing in the This is hey, NASA, go ahead. Pop-up mission control, go ahead. Yeah, NASA, we can't seem to find the moon. Uh, uh, sir, are you calling NASA City Council? Roger, this is NASA, Nebraska. Right? Uh, oh no, sorry, I was calling NASA. NASA, over, over, Roger. 
Uh, by the way, in uh, Nebraska, clear the line. Hey, dude. Did you go ahead and send Roger, that pound? Uh, NASA hey, Pompo, I can't talk about that right now. Uh, Roger. I'll talk about it later once I get up. Uh, is this the moon? Uh, Roger. Oh, that's wonderful, Roger. 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 Just no, steady your cam. Yeah, Stop shaking so much. Tell hey, John Neil, Glenn to stop Glenn. moving. Roger. 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 Try and clear up the image, right? It's a 10 4. Hey, Neil, go ahead and bust the move on that. Staging, Roger. Over. Roger. Wi-Fi, the trajectory confirmed staging. Roger. We're moving away from the board out with Leo. Okay. Right, I'll let you know. Okay, come in too. Roger. Who's dealing with any problem with that? Okay. Uh, negative, not right now, Brian. Roger. Go for staging, Capcom. I'm going to actually travel. <laughs> 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 oh, this is hey, this is purple, man. How'd you get up to the moon so quick? Yeah, man. Kind hey, of, this is a I pop -up mission control. Really go ahead and I'm roll to the, the side over and now. This is, uh, here we go, Roger. Uh, okay, go ahead. Send Roger, you send your tilt to the yard, right? Uh, I'm looking at a crater, actually, outside of my 1020. Roger, what, what, what do you hey, see? Hey, Dave, Roger? did you go ahead and send up that pound? Um, actually, Pompo. Hey, Pompo, I can't talk about that right now. I'll it talk about like it later once I get up. If they were bulls. Uh, Roger. I'm full of smoke them, Roger. 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 Go for stage, Capcom. Confirm and board up, Roger. Hey, Neil, go ahead and bust the move on that. Staging plan. Roger. Over. Roger. Wi-Fi, that's a good one. Roger. Five foot to the end of board out with... Go for stage, Capcom. Hey, Dave, it's me. Does he keep saying... Jack off? Go for stage, Capcom. Go for stage, Capcom. Go for stage, Capcom. <laughs> <laughs>